Good morning, students. Welcome to the Dorong College e-learning platform. I am Dr. Sanjeev Dar, Assistant Professor of Finance in the Department of Commerce, Dorong College, Jaipur. In this video, I am going to discuss an important topic which is very relevant to our daily life, that is e-banking or electronic banking. This topic is a part of the banking subject of Bcom third semester finance major under Guwahati University syllabus. Almost all of us use various e-banking services in our day-to-day -day life. I shall begin with the meaning and definition of e-banking. E-banking or electronic banking is the process by which a customer can perform banking transactions electronically without physically visiting a bank branch or a financial institution. E-banking is anytime and anywhere banking. This means that e-banking services can be availed by the customer from whom without going to the bank and also such services are available beyond the banking hours. There is a definition given by the International Monetary Fund on e-banking. According to the IMF, electronic banking is the use of electronic delivery channels for banking products and services and is a subset of electronic finance. From this definition, it is clear that e-banking services are delivered through the use of information and communication technology tools like a computer, mobile phone and internet etc. Here is a brief history of e-banking. E-banking was originated in the US in 1980s. It began with the introduction of basic electronic services such as ATMs and telephone banking. As internet technology advanced, banks began to develop online banking systems, enabling customers to access a variety of banking services electronically. E-banking in India emerged in the mid-1990s with the establishment of online platforms by banks like ICICI and HDFC. Later on, other commercial banks started to implant e-banking systems of their own. E-banking services that the modern commercial banks provide to their customers can be grouped into five categories although these services are similar and related to each other. Number one is internet banking, number two mobile banking, number three card-based services, number four utility and merchant payment services, and number five additional services. Internet banking. Internet banking is also known as online banking or virtual banking is a system that enables customers of a bank to carry banking activities through login into the bank's website using internet connection. The internet banking is mainly concerned with the fund transfer service. There are different methods of fund transfer service provided by the modern commercial banks to their customers under the internet banking. These are IMPS, which stands for Immediate Payment System, NEFT, National Fund Transfer, RTGS, Real-Time Gross Settlement, and ECS, Electronic Clearing Service. Although all of these are mainly concerned with fund transfer, but there are some functional differences among these services. The IMPS stands for Immediate Payment Service. In this system, fund can be transferred immediately, that means in real time, and there is no need of previously adding the recipient's bank details, etc. And there is a maximum transaction limit of rupees 5 lakhs. In case of uh, an NEFT, the bank details of the recipients must be added previously and uh, there is no transaction limit, either minimum or maximum. 
any amount can be transferred through NEFT. But in case of NEFT, the fund transfer can take two or three hours. That means the transactions are not settled in real time. The RTGS is meant for bulk payment. The minimum transfer amount should be more than rupees two lakhs. And uh, here also the recipient's details or beneficiary details, beneficiary details must be added previously. In case of uh, ECS, uh, the electronic clearing service, from uh, fund can be transferred from one sender to multiple recipients. For example, payment of salary by the government to a large number of employees or payment of dividend of a, by a company to a multiple shareholders or payment of interest by bank to a large number of customers. Number two is mobile banking. Mobile banking is concerned with the provision of banking services with the help of mobile phone technology. <clears throat> there are large number of services covered by the mobile banking such as SMS services, UPI payment service and e-wallet service etc. SMS or notification is provided by the banks to their customers. Information regarding the withdrawals, deposits, transaction status, etc. are provided to the customers through the SMS. This is a part of the mobile banking service. All of us know about the, the UPI, that is Unified Payment Interface. After the emergence of fintech companies, numerous mobile phone applications like Paytm, GPay, PhonePay, PayPal, etc. have been developed and are in use by bank customers. UPI has made fund transfer and utility payments easier and faster. We can make different payments, just uh, uh, scanning the barcodes and uh, just uh, by clicking a single button of our mobile phone. E-wallet. E-wallet is a part of the mobile money application. Almost all of the mobile money applications have the provision of e-wallet or digital wallet. Utility payments and uh, PT expenses are made by the users from e-wallet. It is super fast payment method where a single click can make payment. Card based services uh, like uh, debit card, credit card, forex card, smart card, etc. are uh, known as uh, plastic money. Debit card or ATM card is a prepaid card where customers need to deposit money into the bank account lead to a debit card or ATM card and uh, later on makes the payments uh, or withdrawals from this card. The credit card is a postpaid card where payments are made from the card and uh, after a certain period, the total card bill is paid by the customer to the bank. The forex card is used for the payments in multiple currencies. A traveler can travel with forex card in different countries and can make payments in the local currencies where he or she travels. The smart card is highly sophisticated and which uses microprocessor and memory. The smart card serves multiple purposes. It works as an ID card, health card, debit or credit card, and it has multiple uses. In our day-to-day -day life, we make different utility payments and merchant payments through the use of a mobile phone. <coughs> the utility payments such as subscription, bill payment, insurance premium payment, etc. are 
made by using mobile apps provided by banks to us. Nowadays, uh, shopping malls, departmental stores, restaurants, uh, etc. have their own merchant payment or point of sale system to receive ca their customers' payment. Additional services. Beyond these services, there are some additional services provided by the banks to their customers. <clears throat> these are loan processing, stocks and mutual fund, account management, customer support, etc. Loan application can be processed online through the use of internet banking or mobile banking technology. Banks also provide stock broking services to their customers. There are mobile apps uh, like you know where we can buy mutual funds and uh, the mobile apps of Bank of Boroda also works as a stock broking app where we can trade in stocks or shares. Account management is another important service under e-banking. Account statement, nominee changes, KYC verification, etc. can be done through online using the e-banking platform. Customer support is provided through chatbot, toll-free number or SMS service to the bank customers. Now we come to the merits and demerits of e-banking. Probably all of us are aware about the merits of e-banking system. Some of the merits of e-banking are listed here. Number one, convenient. Number two, 24 into seven hour service. Number three, flexible. Number four, time saving. Number five, cost effective. Number six, automatic service. Number seven, security and safety. Number eight, diversified services. Number nine, global access. Number 10, improved financial inclusion. There are many more advantages and merits of uh, e-banking services. Uh, we have just discussed some of them. All of uh, us uh, know about the convenience of e-banking. It is uh, quite uh, fast service, convenient, flexible, and uh, it requires less time. And uh, also it can be accessed beyond the banking hour. There is a lot of flexibility customers need not to go to the bank branch physically and there is no limitations like holiday, banking hour, etc. The e-banking services are also secure uh, because uh, there is a provision of uh, PIN or password and uh, other security measures maintained by the banks. E-banking services are diversified as uh, we have discussed uh, various e-banking services. E-banking services can be accessed from any country or anywhere in the world. And it has improved the financial inclusion level because uh, e-banking services can be accessed from very remote area, rural area, and also it covers the various segments uh, of our society. Different uh, people uh, are nowadays accessing the e-banking services by using their mobile phone technology or uh, computer and internet connection. Although there are a large number of uh, benefits uh, we are deriving from e-banking system, but uh, there are some uh, limitations also. These are as uh, security risk. Security risk is there because uh, we know the existence of uh, dark web uh, technology, we often face the technological or network issue. Sometimes uh, transactions uh, does not, uh, transactions do not get succeed. It uh, shows transaction failed because of the network error or technical issue. Lack of personal interaction. Sometimes some problems uh, cannot be solved online by the customers. Uh, they need to go to the bank physically. 
next uh, is uh, digital illiteracy in order to perform the banking transactions online or any kind of banking activities online the bank customers uh, must have uh, adequate level of digital literacy they should know how to handle next is uh, financial scam or fraud financial scam or fraud is very common especially in assam so bank customers uh, need to be well aware about such uh, scams or frauds now we come to the conclusion e banking or electronic banking is uh, synonymously used with the electronic finance internet banking digital banking digital payments mobile banking mobile payments etc that means that uh, e banking is uh, known by different tasks in different countries or different region around the world anyway the development of ict especially the emergence of internet and mobile phone technology has changed drastically the functioning of the banking and financial service sectors around the world irrespective of the economies this means that e banking service uh, have changed the people's life in all the countries whether it is uh, developed or under developed there is no doubt that e banking system has brought tremendous changes in the financial life of people the financial life of people financial life in the sense of financial knowledge system or financial behavior of customers have drastically changed just after the emergence of e banking system the Press Bureau of India reports that more than 40% of all payments done in India are digital, majority using UPI. Although we see that uh, most of us make uh, online transactions, uh, therefore the 40% uh, is uh, probably showing a very small number, but uh, it is a genuine percentage as reported by pbi uh, this is uh, probably that uh, majority of the indian people uh, live in a rural area and uh, a rural area is not a fully uh, digitalized digitalized yet uh, that's why this is 40% or else it may be go up to 70% or more anyways the adequate level of financial as well as digital literacy among the people is essentially needed to write the fruits of e banking system e banking system to be successful our people should be more financially literate should have a better digital literacy and and should have the proper awareness on the security system and financial scams etc thank you